humbleness has been underrated. We rate a lot of things today. Everything gets a rating. You can leave reviews for just about everything you buy. Movies get rated, appliances get rated. You can determine how many stars you give something like, this song gets a five out of five stars. Sometimes you'll hear people say, this is overrated. And not often do you hear people say something like, this is underrated, but that's where I come in. So I am going to go on record today saying that humbleness is underrated. Humbleness has been underrated in our look at me, what about me, watch me, follow me, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram kind of society. The nature of social media has made most people adopt the look at me, I've got something to prove mentality, which means we have a generation full of prideful people. It's quite a wonder how a few apps have changed the trajectory of a generation's mindset. We no longer give alms in private, but now it's a postable moment to share images of someone who's down receiving money or food. And while it does give the watchers this feel good type of feeling and it reminds us about kindness, it just goes to show that we've lost the heart of humility and private almsgiving. We no longer do things just to do them. We have to show everyone what we're doing and how we're doing it. It's made many people grow to be more prideful and less humble. And if we're honest, we've all fallen into this trap a time or two, trying to prove our worth. But I tell you this, humbleness has become underrated in our society. Humbleness is a character trait that God loves. Jesus walked in humility and constantly gave God the glory and he always encouraged humility. We've learned in our consumerism culture to always look to the climb, to look for the pedestal, to look for the platform, to look for the stage, look for the money back, to look for the ladder to climb. But we no longer desire the humble things of life. We want to abandon the wilderness for the promised land. We want to run away from the suffering to get to the victory. But you know, there is no mountaintop without the valley. There is no promised land without the wilderness. And in this season of life, God has been really opening my eyes to the gift of the wilderness. And I did say gift, the gift of the wilderness. We all have areas of enslavement in our lives or have had them and we need it to be set free from. But to escape, you must go through the wilderness period to get to your promised land. And I see the body of Christ right now just struggling with the extended wilderness experience that they're going through. We thought that this would be over by now. We thought we'd be eating the fruit of the land by now. We thought that we'd be on the other side of these issues, but we're not. And yet we look around and we realize what we thought is changing. We are not so sure we even understand why we are where we are anymore. And that is all okay because when you look around, the Lord has been near, the Lord has been dear to us, the Lord has been speaking to us, the Lord has been guiding us, He has been delivering us on every side. But we are still in the wilderness. We are not where we thought we'd be this time last year. Yeah. And again, that's okay because the humbling process of the wilderness experience is priceless. And we have to learn to be okay and to be thankful for wilderness provision. We are not to be mumbling grumblers like the people in the wilderness with Moses and Aaron. God provides us exactly what we need, and he is bringing us to a mature place, a place of wholeness, but we must go through the humbling wilderness. Deuteronomy 8, 16 through 19 says, he gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you so that in the end, it might go well with you. 
You may say to yourself, my power, my strength, my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. In that scripture, we see the theme of being humbled because everything, I mean everything we have comes from the Father above. And God is drawn to the humble, the people who have a broken heart, a contrite spirit. When God hears the cry of the humble servant, he comes a running. He comes to their aid. Psalms 34, 17 through 18 says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. We try to avoid being crushed, but it's in the crushing where we are developed. When that is where we develop the correct heart posture towards the Lord, where we learn the keys to spiritual warfare, where we learn the truth in his word and where we find strength in his presence. Humbleness is so underrated. We should be grasping for humbleness because it is the trait of our Savior. Luke 18, 9 through 14 says, To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his chest and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. Kingdom principle is always counterculture. Did you hear me? I said kingdom principle is always counterculture. So in our culture, if we promote ourselves naturally, you get seen, you get more opportunities, you get open doors, but then God humbles you. But in God's kingdom, if you humble yourself, if you start at humbleness, he will exalt you. Humbleness has been under rated. Matthew 23, 11 through 12 says, the greatest among you will be your servant for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Servitude was Jesus's posture. And think about it. He was the king of all kings, yet he was born in a lowly manger. He washed his disciples' feet. He served thousands food. He healed many. He allowed himself to be subject to the cross. He was a humble, humble servant. And he teaches us all to also be the same way. Philippians 2, 3, 3, 11 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient 
to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The kingdom principle is if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. If you promote yourself, God will humble you. So let's understand the core of self-exaltation. The core of this is pride. And we all know pride is sin. Pride is an extremely dangerous and costly sin. Pride comes from Satan, and it was pride that caused the fall of man. And all pride is, is a big old lie. You lie to yourself about how great you are. And we all know that Satan is the father of lies. Satan operates in the spirit of pride and tries to destroy God's people by tempting them to be self-exalters, to self-exaltation, to have self-exaltation. Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride is a destroyer and do not get it twisted. You are not doing yourself any favors by exalting yourself. You are lying to yourself and puffing yourself up, but pride will cost you. Isaiah 2, 11 through 12 says, the eyes of the arrogant will be humbled and human pride brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted and they will be humbled. The Bible also tells us of the rich blessings we get when we walk in humbleness. Proverbs 22, 4 says, humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. There is a cost associated with humbleness as well as pride. This may not be for everybody what I'm about to say, but if you can connect with what I'm saying, then this is most definitely for you. God is moving in a way on many of his people to bring them to a place of deep, deep humility, a place of things not working out the way that they plan or the way that they thought, because he is cultivating humility in his people. You remember when everything you did seemed like it worked out that people call that the Midas touch. You have the Midas touch when everything you do turns to gold, when everything you do just works out. And it seems like now you are not in that season anymore. Um, everything you used to put your hand to, it just used to work. Everything you did and that um, it worked, but now it doesn't seem to be the case. But I'm here to tell you, you have not lost your touch. You are not a loser. Um, you are not not prosperous. You're actually in a different phase. You are actually in the phase of pruning, of shedding. You're in a maturation phase. And how many of you know that that is not the prettiest of faces. It is uncomfortable. It's also at times very confusing, but this wilderness phase is producing more fruit in you. And the shedding phase, this shedding phase is preparing you for what's ahead and what's ahead is more than what's behind you. And if it all succeeded all the time, then guess what? You would think that you had something to do with it. Remember the story of Gideon? He, God didn't want him to have that big old army because he didn't want them to think that they were doing it all. He told him to pare it down. Well, God is doing that in you. He's paring some things down. And what's ahead is actually greater works for you. So you must be humble when you get there. So this wilderness phase, this abasement, this lowness that you're feeling, that you're going through, it's all just preparation for what's ahead. So do not despise the day of small or humble beginnings. And if you allow every part of you to be humbled before your creator, the cost of humility is exaltation, okay? But be clear about it. The humility process at times can be extremely painful, but what it produces is priceless. Christ being the very nature of God himself, he humbled himself. 
and he subjected himself to the cross. But in the end, he took the seat at the right hand of God the Father the, in holy exaltation. James 4.10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. So I'm just here today to really encourage you to uh, have fun on this walk of humbleness. You can have fun on the walk of humbleness because you, when you realize what's actually going on and when you realize what you're really going through is a humblest, humbling process, then you can walk through it with gladness. You can actually enjoy being humbled by God because humbleness produces the kind of fruit you're going to want to see in your life. It's producing for you the fruit that you need for your future. It produces the heart of Jesus, our Savior, our exalted King. So I'm here to just encourage you to be blessed on your humility walk and do not underrate humbleness. Do you hear me? Don't underrate humbleness. Be blessed and let the Lord do his mighty work of humbling you, okay? And you will be blessed for it. Bless you in Jesus' name.